Welcome to today's Pastor's Perspective. I'm Ken Gray, serving here at Calvary Life Family Worship Center in Cheshire, Connecticut. And today, our devotion continues in 2 Samuel chapter 15. Now, Absalom has been received into the king's presence, but he, instead of being grateful, he begins to conspire against the king. Let me read, beginning with verse 1. Now it came about after this that Absalom provided for himself a chariot and horses and 50 men as runners before him. We see here Absalom is trying to present an air of already having received favor with the king. Now the king allowed him into his presence, but he was still quite cautious and rightfully so because Absalom had been very deceitful in his past. So he comes to this place and he begins to conspire against the king. He not only presents himself uh, as someone who has already obtained a place of position and honor and rule, but he then begins to approach the people that are approaching the king for the purpose of judgment. And he says in verse 3, Then Absalom would say to them, See, your claims are good and right, but no man listens to you on the part of the king. Moreover, Absalom would say, Oh, that one would appoint me judge in the land, then every man who has a suit or cause would come to me, and I would give him justice. Now, when I listen to the phrases of Absalom in this particular passage, I'm reminded of a lot of politicians today who are always saying that they are concerned for people's needs in situations. They want to identify with the lowlier people, you might say, with the, the greater population. Absalom, in this case, was using uh, what we would consider a modern democratic tool of manipulating people's minds. It says in verse 6, In this manner, Absalom dealt with all Israel who came to the king for judgment, so Absalom stole away the hearts of the men of Israel. Now, after a long period of time of Absalom doing this, it tells, him, tells us that Absalom approaches the king and asks for permission to leave the area to go and fulfill a commitment to God, a vow to the Lord. Oftentimes, people who are involved or engaged with manipulation carefully cover all of their actions with, a, you might say, a garment of godliness, a garment of religious devotion. And Absalom does this. But it says in verse 10, But Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, As soon as you hear the sound of the trumpet, then you shall say, Absalom is king in Hebron. And then 200 men went with Absalom from Jerusalem, who were invited and were innocent, innocently, and went innocently, and they did not know anything. You see, not only were the people being, in, in large part, being deluded with regards to his motives and intentions, but some went blindly. Some didn't even realize what was happening. He even convinced a very key individual who was a counselor of David named Ahithophel. But then we read in verse 13, Then a messenger came to David, saying, The hearts of the men of Israel are with Absalom. At this David is very rattled. It says in verse 14, David said to all his servants who were with him at Jerusalem, Arise and let us flee, for otherwise none of us will escape from Absalom. Go in haste, or he will overtake us quickly and bring down calamity on us and strike the city with the edge of the sword. Now why would the king be suspicious of this? Because of Absalom's track record. He'd killed his brother who had... Uh, raped his sister. And as a consequence, the king's, it says in verse 15, then the king's servants said to the king, behold, your servants are ready to do whatever my lord the king chooses. You see, there were always those people who were loyal to David. And then there were various people that committed to go with him. And then it came to the fact that the priests also were going with him, carrying the Ark of the Covenant. But after they finished crossing, David says this to them in verse 25. The king said to Zadok, Return the ark of God to the city. If I find favor in the sight of the Lord, then he will bring me back again and show me both it and his habitation. But if he should say thus, I have no delight in you, 
Behold, here I am. Let him do to me as seems good to him. What a contrast between David and his son, Absalom. Absalom was doing everything that he could, manipulation, intimidation, deception. All these tools came out in order to secure for himself a place of position and power. However, David refused to use any of those tactics, and he said, I want the priest to go back. And they'll, he even instructs them, saying, take your sons and let them become informants so that I know what's going on in Jerusalem. But he says, basically, I want you to go back because there's two results to this situation. Either I have the favor of God and God will restore me, or if he's not pleased with me, if I have no delight with him, he says, behold, here I am, let him do to me as good. What is David's concern? It's not position and power, it is the will of God. You see, when we maintain a heart like David, even though he made serious mistakes and errors in his life, God's favor continued with him because his heart was to do the will of God. Absalom's heart was to secure position and power. So he says, listen, I'm taking this particular tactic because my desire is to discern God's will in this matter and then let his will prevail. Let me pray with you about this. Father, we pray that we would learn from this story not to be like Absalom, who was diligently pursuing position, power, prestige. Lord, we pray that we would have the heart of David, that we would desire to secure your will in our lives, in our churches, in our places of work and employment. Wherever you may have stationed us, Lord, let us have a heart of David that is concerned for the will of God and not a heart of selfish ambition. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you and thank you for listening to this uh, today's Pastor's Perspective. It's a very important one when it comes to leadership especially, that we would have a heart after David and not a heart after Absalom. God bless you and have a great weekend.